And then we have this big old candle that, you know, it's a ripper. Um, in this case, I'm going to wait for a five minute close, but I'm going to wait for a retest of this support area in order to enter. Um, just because I don't really want to chase this in order to, you know, miss out on some better price action. But this retest was very highly supported and we get another break even higher. Um, so that's where I would enter in this if I was trading in this particular sense. On this daily chart, um, we noticed some more patterns. Um, one that I notice here is on the flip of a double top, which we have here, we have a double bottom, um, which is where multiple price points have hit this bottom and then gone back up. Um, this is another trade we can take. Um, but my favorite two to play on the bullish side, we got the hammer candle and then a bullish engulfing. Um, I use them more on the five minute in order to be more, you know, more um, confident in my trades, when to take them, where to take them, um, and how much of a sizing to take. And then on the flip, the bearish side, I like these shooting stars. Shooting stars mean more when they're at the top of a trend. Um, this one right here, big shooting star candle. Right, and then we have a couple little days of retests, people trying to hold it up, and then we get the knife. So shooting stars, and then it also the bullish engulf, bearish engulfing candle, um, which means sellers are in full control. Um, these candles also mean more on a bigger time frame. Um, so the daily candle means more than the five minute candle. The hour candle means more than the 15, um, so on and so forth. And then for patterns. So one thing I notice um, here is we have this pattern of a descending, this descending top, descending wedge type. Um, and it, then it consolidates around the top of this and breaks. This is something we see a lot when a breakout comes um, is these higher lows and then forcing a breakout, which is nice. In terms of patterns, I truly don't use them that much because I believe that um, support and resistance key levels mean way more than the patterns do. Um, so it's something I don't really key in that mo on that much, but they can be very, very helpful for certain traders um, and certain people love them. Um, so that, that's okay, but the key thing is, you know, finding your own strategy, finding things that work for you um, and being able to repeat those, as I said earlier. Um, so that's something very important um, and then another thing with these candles, right? So we have these candles here. We have this bullish engulfing and then it closes over a VPA profile. Very important. Um, and then we get these retests and explosion, but the ability to close over this VPA profile is very important in order to get that big move. Um, and it shows the flip from resistance to support and then a launch pad up. Um, that's how VPA helps me a lot. You mix that with the candle, mix it with support and resistance. And that, that's pretty effective if you ask me in order to be able to know when to tra trade um, and levels to identify for both puts and calls on any level of a chart. So that's nice. But basically I keep it pretty simple when it comes to patterns. Um, I trade those four different types of candles on the five minute usually um and then when it comes to taking a trade i always wait for a five minute candle to close before taking a trade so even if a, it's a fail right and i want to take puts then i wait for this candle to close um before i enter into a trade um reversely so for the calls but i wait for that close above our trigger point and then i play um accordingly make sure you manage your risk you know that stop loss, um, I set it down. I actually, I think at first I had it set at the top of this zone here. Um, it was kind of, I didn't get a great feel on it, right? So I was a little more lenient knowing that the trend is high. Um, buyers are in control of Apple. Um, so that's something you can kind of get away with on times. But the better way is, you know, manage your risk. If you're a smaller account, I personally um, used to set mine at 10% no matter what. Very hard stop. Um, even if I had a bad fill, because I was not going to lose more than 10% of my account on one trade. Um, and even then, I don't put more than, let's say, 25, I think it's about 25%-ish on a trade. Um, I don't calculate exact numbers.
to do that, but I use about 25% of my overall capital on one trade if I'm very confident. If I'm not very confident, I use about 10 to 15% in that area, um, and I'll make sure to manage the risk. So if I do lose that 10%, right, that's only 1% of my account, and then we're good. So this is my second video in this series. Um, in this one, we're going to go over trade execution um, along with some patterns and candlesticks that I use in order to be able to trade um, a little bit more effectively and also be able to get in trades, say, if a put trigger fails or a call trigger fails um, and be able to take that with some confidence and conviction that, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work out. All right, so, oh, one second. This is, looks a little weird for some reason. So I'm going to go back to Apple. Um, we had those lines set. I had those lines set on Friday at uh, 175.96 and 173.75 put and call triggers. Yeah. All right. So the first thing, when I'm looking to execute this trade, this is actually the only trade I took on Friday. Um, I didn't really like the price action of some of the others that I was looking at. So this was a big one here. So let's see. December 9th, December 10th, right? So we get this break here at start, but look how big it is, this big old runner. Um, then we also have this bouncing off, and then it follows with SPY. Another thing, I always keep SPY open when looking at trades. Um, I think that's very important because you never know when uh, something's going to knife, and SPY often determines that. Um, and then another thing is I usually don't trade the first... 15 to 30 minutes because people can ramp up these prices so much and the premiums get so high That it can just fall right away and we see that here with Apple um, That's something that can happen So I like those premiums to set in a little bit people to kind of relax and not try to FOMO chase stuff up And then I like to play it about 15 30 minutes in All right, so what I see here with Apple right is we get this this is the early morning action um, this right here is our Call trigger. Um, so where I'd take this initially is I'd take this here on the breakout, right? And I'd keep my size, keep my size, keep my size. I'm not too worried. We need a retest, yeah? So it retest multiple times. Still using these same levels, still using these same levels, consolidating over and around the line. So I'm not going to stop myself out here um, due to that because it's consolidating around this level. If we were to lose this level, around here and also on this five minute we have this POC at 175 with a vol big old volume profile. If it were to get underneath this volume profile at 175.5, retest and fail, I'd be out right away. Um, and another thing right here, this is a, uh, it's a hammer candle. It's not at the bottom of a trend, which I like better, but we have it here, um, retest that level and we're able to, you could even quick scalp this up to 177 area, um, a quick move, and then the retest play again. But anyways, so we're playing it here, and we have this consolidation here. A lot of consolidation in this area, and then we have a break here. Um, long lower wick, a lot of buying pressure up. And we see it gets over these two volume profiles, starting to move over this third one, and then then it's just, you know, breakout. Um, this is the, the high of the day all-time highs actually for that matter so once it breaks that you know breaking through uses it again as support resistance term support and it's off Apple's gone um, so there's a big move I think this ran 1300 percent or something like that but that's something crazy um, that you know you don't expect that move every day stuff like that but along the way I scaled here um, at this 176 retest I scaled one out and then I actually added back in on this candle here. Um, the reason I liked it is because we still had this buying pressure above and it respected this VPA profile. Um, the top of it tr did hit resistance at this VWAP measured, um, but I liked the buying pressure up. And then we see the next move. Um, and ma the reason why I had more conviction is Apple's in this big trend. Um, and it's been breaking out recently, very, very strong stock. So I had a little bit more conviction um, and kept my size in here. But break out here, and then I scaled again here on these two at this double tap pattern, double top pattern. Um, it took out another, I think I was down to a third left of my thing, and then I just let it run. Um, I put my stop loss here. I think it ended up being at like, I was up about 
35% or something like that um, if it were to hit, but it didn't. It just kept going, um, and then I closed it actually at 179, which is up here, which is a nice move. Um, I didn't get the full move, obviously, but I did get a very good move off of this. Um, so when it comes to patterns, I don't use patterns as much, but there are some things that, you know, are important um, and can be used to help with your trading a lot. Um, and the first one I like is these descending wedges, right? So it's like from the highs down um, on the five minutes, it's gonna be a quick trend, but we'll look, let's look at this 15. So if, yeah, see, we have a bigger one here from this double top here down you know, we can even play a short term wedge here um, and then short term wedge, you know, in an uptrend. Um, another big thing that I like to play, right, is double tops. So if we have double tops, these are both 176.5. Yeah, 0.75. All right. So we have a double top here. This basically means that the buyer, the sellers are stepping in, taking position here and forcing this price down. So what I like, you know, we can play that. Um, you can enter into puts on that. Say this is your uh, your level of uh, for calls, right? So we can play this if, you know, we see these very high upper wicks, which means sellers are in control, right? And this is a shooting star, actually. Um, that's probably my favorite play type of candle to play um, when it comes to entering puts on a failed call, failed call trigger. So it hits this, say this is our line, you know, we set um, the day before as a call trigger. It hits this as a shooting star, right? Um, price is forced all the way down. Um, I'm entering puts once I see some confirmation. So I'd actually enter here once it goes underneath at this, this big red candle here. Um, I'd enter it there, set my stop loss for the uh, this line. If anything above that, we don't want to, you know, it's probably going to be, able, it's got some buyers stepping in, stuff like that. So we see that, and then we get this big breakdown in support. Um, on the flip side, entering into a failed put trigger. Um, so I'm going to use, let's see, this put hasn't really been. So I'm going to use this candle over here, actually. So if, if we were to use this um, on the daily, right? I would use these, a hammer candle. So basically a hammer candle, see if I can find one even. Here's one. So this hammer candle here, um, a hammer candle is formed with a long, this is more of a hammer, with a long lower wick, a small little body, and very small upper wick. This means the buyers are fully in control and they're supporting this level and pushing the uh, price up. Um, these are very, very important, very cool uh, candles to trade, especially if it's at a big support area. Say this one here. This is a doji candle, um, similar to a hammer, but it has a little bit more of a higher top. Um, and so it has a big support here on 174. And we can see all these buyers stepping in, and then it gaps up in the morning. Um, that's That's very cool to see especially at the bottom of a downtrend into a support level, and then we usually get a pop, which is nice. Secondly, I like to use bullish engulfing candles a lot. Um, they are the most bullish type of candle, which basically it means this entire candle covers the back candle, and it's bought all the way up by either buyers. In this case, a bullish engulfing will be buyers. Um, on the flip side, we have, let's see if I can find a bearish engulfing. Here we go. This is a bearish engulfing, right? It's close to a bearish engulfing. So basically, it's the flip side. This entire candle covers the previous candle, signifying sellers are in control, and they brought this price all the way down. Um, on that, if we have that at this resistance line, I'm hopping in on a failed call entering puts. On the flip, if... Let's say I don't really have, let's say this right here was our line and we have this okay doji-ish type candle, not 